I'm going to take a few minutes here to talk about nipples for musket sized percussion cap firing guns. These are a little different than the ones you normally find for the number 11 cap. I want to go over some of the differences and what I recommend is uh, some of the best nipples uh, that you can get for your gun right now. This is uh, the one that I removed from the gun in a previous video. You can see that one's got a really large flash hole and uh, they were designed to, uh, this is an original design, they're designed to put a lot of fire down on the powder and uh, increase the uh, chances of the gun going off. And they did a pretty good job of it. Unfortunately, there's some problems associated with this type of a nipple. Mainly, they tend to cause blowback, a lot of blowback uh, up through the nipple, out onto the hammer face, and this can drive the hammer back. Uh, you get a lot of particles, stuff coming back towards your face. Uh, they were a good idea at the time, but there are better options available today. And I'm going to show you a few of them. We're going to start with a, by the way, a musket nipple is the type. They're the largest size that are commonly available today. They uh, normally feature, they're known as four wing caps or top hat caps. And uh, these are a bit larger, quite a bit larger uh, than your standard number 10 or number 11 percussion caps. Okay, there's two basic types now that I recommend. One is a stainless steel. And... First off, these will reduce the amount of a, or the possibility of corroding up into the bolster if the gun's left attended for a period of time. This makes it much easier to remove. Uh, it also uh, prevents uh, the cone itself from corroding this particular one. The cone had snapped part of it off, so it wasn't useful any longer. Uh, these will wear much longer. And these two look basically identical. And the biggest difference in them is the way that the flash, uh, flash channel is designed in the weapon now. Um, today's modern nipples feature a much, much smaller flash hole than what you see in the original style designs. And this allows, because of the way that they're drilled inside, this, uh, if you notice up here, there's a slight coning. This forces the fire down into a, into a funnel and that funnel jets out through here in a long steady stream of fire that tends to it'll hit the, the uh, bolster the drum and then angle off towards the main charge and this keeps the, these nipples just as reliable as the old style but uh, the big advantage that they offer is you don't get the blowback coming back up through the percussion cap nipple when the gun's fired so you're not going to get powder falling hitting the nose of the hammer of the gun and you're not going to have that particulate matter or at least uh, the great amounts of particulate matter coming back into your face when you fire even though of course i always recommend you wear shooting glasses when you're when you're firing any kind of firearm it's just good safety sense but there are two kinds of two kinds of flash holes on these these nipples are identical except for the way that the flash hole is channeled out this here is a large hole this here is a small hole now, small hole nipples are designed for shooting uh, live fire with bullets. The large channels are designed, specifically designed, for using or, or being used with uh, blank charges by reenactors that are using uh, muskets in reenactment shows. Uh, generally use a much, much lighter charge of powder in a, in a reenactment blank. And you'll, uh, those guys tend to use a, a CCI musket cap known as a reenactor's cap which is a, a very, very light charge in the cap itself. It's a fairly quiet cap to go off, and uh, it doesn't produce the jet stream of fire that a normal musket cap like this one would. These larger channels allow that fire to get down into that light charge and to fire it off uh, reliably. Uh, but again, the hole's not large enough that even that light charge could cause blowback coming back up out of the nipple. These nipples also tend to work real well if you're getting, if you're using some of the harder to ignite uh, substitute powders, Pyrodex, uh, American Arms, some of that kind of stuff, which can be pretty tricky to get it to fire at times. And uh, these nipples will help with reliable ignition under those conditions or using that type of powder. Another type of nipple is an Amco nipple. 
This is made out of a hardened material, and while the stainless steel is quite hard and, and uh, they tend to be heat treated, uh, they will peen out over time. These nipples here are, are hardened to an even greater degree, and uh, they offer a lot more tensile strength. They're also, because of the type of coating that's involved in the nipple, uh, are even more corrosion resistant um, than your standard stainless steel nipple. Now the thing is, of course, that they got this pretty gold or brass finish on them. It doesn't really look all that authentic, but you know what? Who cares if you're just shooting for fun? And even in a, a reenactment standpoint, nobody's going to notice it, but all your Amco nipples are designed to be fired with live ammunition, bulleted ammunition, so they'll feature that small uh, fire hole channel. These are excellent nipples for all purpose, hunting, target shooting. Uh, comes down to it, I would probably go with a stainless steel nipple uh, for reenactment use using that large firing channel. But this is what I'm going to choose to use when I go to shooting uh, this gun I'm working on now. Uh, this is going to be my go-to nipple. Now I have these stainless steel nipples that I'm going to keep as backups just in case I break or peen this one out. I don't expect that to happen for a long time. I've also purchased a second nipple which is uh, turned down and this one allows me to use number 11 percussion caps with the gun just in case I can't find musket caps which I might add I went through quite a bit of trouble uh, locating musket caps. I finally ended up uh, finding a place down in Missouri that has some full power ones. These are shuts and they're made in Spain. Uh, from what I've seen uh, in the use so far they've been pretty excellent surefire cap, nice and hot and non-corrosive. So my go-to cap for 30 years has been the RWS but right now I just can't find those so I had to to go ahead and substitute these and they seem to be working all right. Pretty expensive with the shipping, that's the bad part, but they were available. Anyway, this is another option here. Uh, this will allow me to use uh, standard number 11 caps in the event I just can't get musket caps any longer. And uh, 10 caps, 11 caps are pretty common in my area, whereas the musket caps, they just can't be found right now. I'm not terribly sure this, again, features that real, real small uh, firing pinhole. And I'm not real sure how reliable the ignition is going to be with the number 11. The only way I'm going to find that out is to actually get this rifle out on the range and get it shooting. But we get that done, I'll, uh, I'll let some feedback come back out onto a video. Let people know how that worked out. So anyway, that's just a little bit of advice. One other thing is uh, musket nipples are not the same size. Uh, the particular gun I'm working with now uses a standard for American-made muskets, which is a 5 16 by 24 thread. <coughs> Excuse me, there are some other guns out there, Italian and Spanish-made guns, that do use a, a metric system musket nipples, which are an 8 by one millimeter. Um, and there's, you have an English thread, which I believe is a 5 16 by 24, and then another common size is 5 16 by 20. And you really need to know exactly what size thread your your muskets or rifle is using uh, before you go ahead and fire the, uh, or purchase a nipple. Um, easiest way to do that, of course, is to get the nipple out of the gun, uh, put it on a screw plate, or have somebody check it with a thread gauge, and they can give you a pretty good idea of what size that nipple is. If you're ever in doubt, uh, if you're going and purchasing online or you're going to do it mail order, you may want to ship the old nipple down to the place that you're placing the order with. They can look at it, measure it, and, and uh, send you the correct nipple. These particular nipples came from Dixie Gunworks out of Union, Tennessee. It's a great place to deal with. Uh, wonderful, knowledgeable people in black powder stuff. So uh, going through one of those specialty shops is a great way to end up making sure you're going to get the right stuff. Anyway, I just wanted to touch base on some nipples here and... and uh, what you might want to look for when you, uh, or if you decide you need to purchase a new nipple for your muzzleloader. Thanks for watching.